Hello my darlings, it's story time and today we've got another unconventional princess. So unconventional means, well, when we think of a princess, we often think of a quite traditional one. So uh, somebody, a, a girl who wears quite a poofy fancy dress and often needs a lot of rescuing. So an unconventional one is one who breaks those traditions, those ideas that we tend to have in our head and does things differently. And we've read quite a few stories or heard quite a few stories recently about princesses who do things differently. And this is another princess who does things differently. And this one is called Princess Samarty Pants and it's by Babette Cole. So she does the writing and the illustrations. So on the back, on the blurb, it says, Princess Smarty Pants does not want to get married. She enjoys being a muzz. But being a rich and pretty princess means that all the princes want her to be their missus. Find out how Princess Smarty Pants fights to preserve her independence in this hilarious fail fairy tale with a difference. So independent, independence is being able to do things your own way, okay? And Ms, so Mrs is what people tend to call themselves when they get married, and Ms is what people call themselves when they, they well, either when they're not married or when they just prefer people not to know either way and they just think people should mind their own business. Okay, and then miss is what you call yourself when you're not married and you don't mind that nobody knows that. Right, so Princess Samarty Pants. And here we go. We've got the royal crest. So royal families, they have a crest, a coat of arms, which is like a fancy sign for their family. And this is rather a funny one because it's got all these fun funny creatures. And it says, Samati Pantos Rulus Ocaeus. So here is Princess Smarty Pants. And look at all these creatures following her. They're funny, aren't they? Not many princesses have those. Right. Princess Smarty Pants did not want to get married. She enjoyed being a muzz. And there she is enjoying watching the television with her pets and eating some chocolates. I enjoy watching the television and eating some chocolates sometimes. Not too often because, you know, healthy eating and all that. But it's good to be able to enjoy things sometimes. Right, okay. It's a bit messy though, isn't it? But she obviously likes to do things her own way. There we go. And then... Over here, mm, she's not looking so happy there, is she? Because she was very pretty and rich, all the princes wanted her to be their missus. You know, those don't seem like good reasons to me for wanting to marry somebody. You should want to marry somebody because of who they are, not because of what they look like or how much money they have. Oh, what a waste of space they are. So here we go. Here are her, the people who want to marry her. And Princess Smarty Pants is looking very un unimpressed there. She's like, meh. No, not interested. Princess Smarty Pants wanted to live in her castle with her pets and do exactly as she pleased. Now look at these pets. Have you ever seen anything like them before? They are gigantic. And look, that is a gigantic snail. And here she is on the back of this one giving it a good old scrub. She's having to scrub it with a broom. Look, they've got some bones down here. Yikes. Time you smartened yourself up, said her mother the queen. Stop messing about with those animals and find yourself a husband. The queen is not impressed. Ah dear. And look, there's one of her little pets down there going, grr, grr. Suitors. So suitors are people who want to marry her and want to be considered as possibles for her to marry. So suitors were always turning up at the castle, making a nuisance of themselves, being pesky. Right, declared Princess Smarty Pants, whoever can accomplish the task that I set will, as they say, win my hand. So that means get to marry her. So the expression is uh, your hand in marriage. So here we go. She asked Prince Compost to stop the slugs eating her garden. Oh my goodness, look at that slug. Ah, it's coming for you. I don't think he managed that, did, it? did he? He just ran away. Ah! Off he goes. No luck for him. She asked Prince Rushforth to feed her pets. Do you think he managed that? I don't think so. Look at that. 
that's his, those are his legs just there. And there's a bucket of bones. He did not feed them. She challenged Prince Pelvis to a roller disco marathon. I think she just danced all over him. He is not winning that. Look at all those fireworks. She invited Prince a bone shaker for a cross country ride on her motorbike. Uh, and look at those creatures down there. Yikes. She called on Prince Vertigo to rescue her from a tower or from her tower. So Vertigo is when you have a real problem with heights. So he is not going to be able to rescue her from a very tall tower. We know all about height now, don't we? And look, her pets over here are just laughing at him. Oh dear, that's not very nice of them, is it? Oh, yikes, what's happening here? <gasps> she sent Prince of Bash Thumb to chop some firewood in the royal forest. There he is with an axe, but I think it's more likely they're going to get him. He wasn't expecting the trees to come after him. She suggested to Prince Fetlock that he might like to put her pony through its paces. The pony just chucked him off. Whoop! She told Prince Grovel to take her mother, the Queen, shopping. So there he is, and he is just weighed down by all these parcels. I think the Queen knows how to shop a lot. And up here it says lingerie department. That means when you go shopping for underwear... And I think he'd find that a little bit awkward. <laughs> Look, those are really big pants. She commanded Prince Swimbladder to retrieve her magic ring from the goldfish pond. Have you ever seen a goldfish pond like that? I mean, is that a goldfish? I don't think so. And look, look where the ring's going. Yikes, I don't think he's going to get that. Look how terrified he looks. None of the princes could accomplish the task he was set. They all left in disgrace. There they are, all going. Well, that's that then, said Smarty Pants, thinking she was safe. There she is up there, waving them off. Bye, ha, didn't want any of you to win my hand of marriage. Then Prince Swashbuckle turned up, so there he is. Hello, I'm Prince Swashbuckle. Got a very fancy car. He stopped the slugs eating her garden. There we go, he's poured them a drink. <laughs> now he's got the hiccups. Fed her pets. Oh, he used a helicopter. Roller discoed until dawn. Even Princess Smarty Pants looks a bit tired there. Rode for miles on her motorbike. Look, he's managing it even with a blindfold on. He's fine. My goodness. He rescued her from the tower. Yikes. He found some firewood to chop in the forest. So there he is. He managed it without hurting the trees that were alive. Though they do look a bit grumpy about it all. He even tamed her horrid pony. Oh, he's using some hypnotism. Ooh. He took her mother, the queen, shopping. Look, he's using some elephants to carry all of her shopping. And retrieved her magic ring from the goldfish pond. He's using his sword to keep this creature's mouth open and took the ring out. Prince Swashbuckle didn't think Princess Smarty Pants was so smart. So she gave him a magic kiss. Mwah! And he turned into a gigantic warty toad. Broom! Prince Swashbuckle left in a big hurry. Oh, my goodness. Oh. When the other princes heard what had happened to Prince Swashbuckle, none of them wanted to marry Smarty Pants. And there she was, left alone to live like just how she wanted to be. So she lived happily ever after. There we go. That's the end. Bye, Princess Smarty Pants. I hope you enjoyed the story about Princess Smarty Pants and all of her crazy pets. Bye.